Ja, välkomna hit till Globala torget, Glo bokmässan i Göteborg, där vi nu ska ta i och dra igång ett program på ett av bokmässans tema, Sydafrika. Och eh, tyvärr ska jag säga att ni som noga har studerat eh, programmet och har sett att det har utlovats ett samtal med kollega Potoma. Hon har dessvärre fått förhinder, men vi kommer att ha en annan panel som diskuterar runt kultur i Sydafrika under en halvtimme och därefter kommer det äga rum en oerhört spännande boklansering som missar inte den för allt i världen. Men nu har vi tre personer på scen. Det är Louise Lindfors från Afrikagrupperna, Maleba Sefodi och Hop I'm sorry som ska få introducera sig själva och ska föra ett samtal runt kulturen i Sydafrika. Kör hårt. Thank you very much uh, Björn. And a warm welcome to all of you. I'm, I'm I hope that this amazing topic of like contemporary South Africa and the role of art and the possibilities to to address challenges and also change society in a way or maybe yeah act in a transitional way from from within uh, will guide us through this seminar and these amazing panelists that has uh, joined me on stage are already the heroines of <laughs> of this evening since you heard we have two people who got stuck in other places and you have joined us uh, for this amazing conversation in such short notice so uh, please give a warm welcome to Malebo Sepodi and uh, hope Nishwangesa almost i have been practicing but it's difficult okay Uh, my name is Louise Limfors. I'm Secretary General for uh, Afrika Gruppen, a Swedish solidarity organization. And we will address a little bit, I hope, <laughs> come, come closer to the role of civil society and to the different stakeholders in society that can actually promote change and advocate human rights and work for women's rights and be part of this green transition that we all need to promote. But uh, I will give the floor to my amazing guests and maybe we could start a little bit on this connection um, around uh, climate change, climate crisis and where we're standing right now. Um, and, and please introduce, maybe if you start by introducing yourselves because you also have this very broad spectra of uh, possibilities to address this from different perspectives uh, due to your both activism, your arts and, and, and your um, academ academic uh, uh, persona. So, so I'll, I'll hand the floor to you to Thank start you. with. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi. Hey. <laughs> um, it's really great being here and I'm so glad that uh, we're having this conversation. Um, and I think for me, art, art is, is a really uh, close kind of companion to me uh, because I do a lot of work within the academic space, but I also do a lot of work in the art space and that usually does not get like um, uh, the space that it needs and I'm so glad that we are here today. So um, I, I, I work uh, within the tech space and I do a lot of work with African feminism but what I really want to talk about is a, you know, the, the kind of issues that we deal with in our society. So a lot of the work that I do a lot is around, um, you know, how we think about the role of women, the role of queer people in society and how uh, we can actually tell our own stories in order to challenge some of these societal sy systematic things that are in place. And whenever we have this conversation, there's always something that gets excluded. And it's the issue of the environment and the climate, right? And I always say to my, uh, my colleagues that climate change is a feminist issue. It is an African feminist issue. Because if you look at the world and what's happening, Africa is the one that's suffering the most and it's the one that's contributing the least to this whole mess that's caused by capitalism, you know, um, you know, that's caused by this kind of global consumption culture. 
So one of the ways um, that I'm involved in, in talking about these issues is as a group of artists across um, certain continents, um, uh, from, from Latin America to Asia to Africa, we've come together and we said, how can we collaborate to bring the issues of climate um, change or the climate crisis or the issues of the environment, how can we make it accessible? Because many times we talk about it in a, in a very scientific way. So we've decided to use the medium of poetry, of fiction writing, of photography to center the climate crisis and to talk about it on the ground. Because so many times this conversation can be so exclusionary and people think that only the West can talk about this. But we think about us as Africans and how we've always had a relationship with the land and how we've always constructed knowledge around that relationship. And so we also have something to say about what's happening with the world, with the planet and with the environment. Yeah. Yes, and maybe you can elaborate a little bit more on that uh, AGAM agenda, the project that you're mentioning, because it's very interesting to see both how, how it's an, an instrument of change, but also maybe releasing some of the power that is actually within art. And as you're saying, this, uh, the, the global language that we can all access, something that is more related to, to feelings and to existential uh, condition of, of the human species, <laughs> rather than the, the more academic, the research, the numbers, the statistics, the alarming um, things that we are, are sharing, of course, in, in, uh, in science. Uh, Hope, I would like to, to hear a little bit uh, more on your position. I know you're part of the poetry collective uh, Hear My Voice. Uh, I, I think I bet you are what you uh, what you are named. Like uh, you, you are hope, and you, <laughs> and we we shall hear your voice. <laughs> Can you please uh, elaborate a little bit on your position in in both changing the world, but also in uh, from your perspective? Like, what challenges do you see? Of course. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, so my name is Hope uh, Nechibambe, also known as Solid Hope. I'm a poet, I'm a storyteller, I'm also a voiceover artist. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that the role of, of art in general in society is important because um, we get to interact with issues, uh, societal issues, in a way that, that sort of almost... Um, I'm looking for a less forceful word, but it, it's this sort of invitation to people to say, lean in, listen to, to, to these issues. Um, I think art sort of demands attention, uh, whatever form it is, whether it's painting, whether it's music, whether it's poetry, um, it demands that attention and we have this sort of sense as, as humans to sort of, we want to lean in, uh, we want to, and I think that's, that's an important thing because when you have the attention of people, um, then we can start to, to really look at what are the issues that we need to be, to be dealing with. We can start to, to ask each other questions. Um, and, and that's an important thing, because when there's, you know, when there's questions, then we are, we are then sort of engaging with whatever issues there, there might be. Uh, like I said, I'm a poet, and so most of my work I do through poetry, I do through spoken word. Um, and my work fundamentally uh, focuses on gender-based violence, which is one of the biggest issues in South Africa. And, you know, I, I use that, I use poetry as a tool uh, to speak to these issues, to address these issues. And, um, you know, I always find that um, people, I mean, I, I don't think poetry in itself changes the world, but I think that when when we are together, when we are listening to each other, um, we stand a better chance at changing some of these things that, you know, poetry challenges perspective, it challenges ideas and, and how, how we engage with the world, how we look at the world. And I think when we have that as a seed, um, we have hope. <laughs> Thank you. Um, 
maybe if, if we could, can stay in this context and, and talk a little bit about the project that you mentioned. Um, it, it, you, had, you had two examples. One was called Harvest Moon and the other one is When is Now? And I really love that title. When is Now? Yeah. Thank you so much, Hope, for that. I mean, there's this quote that says, the role of the artist is to bring about the issues of the times, right? And you, ca you cannot afford to keep quiet as an artist. And I think of during apartheid, you know, the idea that books were banned, certain books were banned, certain musicians had to, go to exile. Some of the history I know, I learned from songs, right? So the artist has always been so important in terms of driving. Um, information and um, so so with the Harvest Moon and the When Is Now project it's it's a really exciting project because here you have artists from Asia from Africa from Latin America can you imagine um, with all our different kind of mediums and we we do collaborative work so the first one that we did was Harvest Moon and uh, what would happen is we'd have a photographer send you a, a still, one of their pictures that they've taken, that in their kind of ways of interpreting the world, say that this is what's wrong with the environment. And then they send it to another artist who is a fiction writer, for example, and interprets that question, uses it as like a probe, right? And interprets that picture in a way that they are centering the issues that we are facing in society. So one of the issues that I wrote about was the flooding that happens across our continent that never gets attention, right? Germany floods, everyone makes noise about it. And we're like, we've been experiencing these crises for so long and nobody's saying anything about it because of how we are marginalized, right? So this is our time to take back our voices and write about them. And so what happens is that we now use these different mediums. We use poetry, we use fiction, so that we speak, we, we, we also remove like the kind of elitism in the way that we write about the climate change and the way that we use words like pedagogy, you know? And we are like saying, we are using a medium that can, you know, speak to anyone. And, and so Harvest Moon was just a collaborative project with artists across um, the globe in terms of how we think of ourselves and how we are highlighting our issues. The second one is When Is Now, where we would, where we would think about our, our spaces and our relationship with the land and how we think about it and how development has affected our relationship with the land, right? So there was a community in South Africa where they were trying to build uh, they were trying to, 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 to bring like development in the community because why they thought it's good for you, um, you know, you're going to get more money, etc. And the community said, why do you think we need development in the way that you think we need development? We are growing our own food, we are taking care of the land, please leave us like this and we are at peace. And a lot of us would have not known about it until a poet wrote about that situation. So then all of us started being curious to say, let's look at this community. And for the first time, we're now talking about all these black women that have been tending the land, that have been protecting the land, that have been saying that capitalism is bad for our environment. And so we are going to protect the land and the kind of work that they do. So when is now is your relationship with the land. And then we, 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 we write it in, in, in poetry, poetic forms and some of the work that we wrote got featured in the COP conferences in Glasgow. Um, and, um, and another artist would take one of my lines and then would like paint a mural um, interpreting another artist's poetry. So I wrote a piece called um, Native Nostalgia and an artist in Indonesia took two of my lines and painted a mural. And in that way caused people in Indonesia to be curious and we started having this conversation about our relationship to the land and how can we continue, you know, uh, to have this kind of relationship and to preserve and to, I don't like the word protect, but to live in harmony. And um, yeah, so, that, so this, is, this is just like one of the ways that we are urgent about our issues and we are bringing it to the ground, yeah. Thank you. Hope, I know that you uh, are also working to address this uh, 
illness of our time, the, the linkage between patriarchy and capitalism and how it's affecting people and how it uh, also causes violence. Uh, and the gender-based violence is something that is, we have been talking about this many years in, in, in all over the world, of course, but in, uh, in South Africa, it's a huge problem. Uh, and it's affecting and limiting people's lives in, in so many ways. Um, and I know that you, you have been working with this, you have been writing about it, you have been expressing uh, all the dimensions of this problem in, in poetry. And now this poetry has also been adapted to a film. Could you tell us a little bit about the We Are Dying Here project? Of course. Um, so We Are Dying Here is... Um is a project that is speaking about gender-based violence in South Africa. Uh, we started off as, um, as, it started as a stage production. I mean, we still have, we still perform the stage piece, uh, despite the fact that we have a short film. But yes, uh, it's directed by Sipokazi Jonas. Uh, it was co-written by Sipokazi Jonas, um, myself, and uh, Zimbini Mahwetu. And uh, it started off as a, like I said, as a stage piece. Um, and um, during the lockdown, we shot uh, a short film. Um, and the short film is out now, and it speaks to that. And I mean, the work, like it, it's, it sort of came from, obviously it, it's gender-based violence, so subjects like that don't come from a very cute place. Um, it, it came from, from a wound. Um, but I think the amazing thing that we are seeing with, with this project, uh, whether we are performing on stage or whether people are, are watching the short film on screen, uh, is the feedback that we've been getting, which has been really validating to, to the work and or, or rather the importance of the work. Uh, because I think a lot of times, even as artists, even when we know that our work is important and it's necessary, uh, I think there are moments when when we forget also like this is actually important and and it's necessary so i think the validation that we've been getting it's just a feedback from from people that have had the experience with the work or that have said i watched that and it really made me think about things that i never thought of it made me look at things differently um, it made me look at myself and question myself and some of my behavior and um, and it's also, and it's been, there's been a large majority of men that have also been, you know, coming and, and saying this sort of feedback. And for us, that shows us, and, and also just kind of like, this, this is what we should carry on doing, um, making work that speaks to, to the issues that are a problem. Um, and I think it, it's amazing how a piece of work um, can can do that. I think I think uh, you know sometimes it's we're listening to this feedback, and we're just so humbled, and sometimes it's actually a little bit overwhelming because you're like, whoa, um, I know that this work is important because you know we get into these things, we we're doing projects, and of course we want the work to mean something, but then when you release the work and it actually means something, and people actually say it means something, um, it it sort of hits you, and you're like, whoa, this is why. Uh, you're reminded of your why and why you started. And I think that's a, that's a powerful thing to say, this is why we need the arts, um, because it has this power that is beyond us as artists. And I think a lot of times we're just channels through which this work comes from. And I see that in observing the impact uh, of the project, you know, to see like, this is actually beyond me, I'm also, it, it, it tends to feel a lot of times like um, I'm standing outside of the work and looking at what, what the work is doing. And I almost feel like in as much as I'm a part of the work, I'm not a part of it. Like it's bigger than me. And I think that's the power of art and why we should always, always carry on. So well spoken and so inspiring as well. I'm thinking that that could also inform what we need to do within the so-called development sector, because that's actually w what you explained here, the, the role of art, that's also the role of, of de development. That's, that is development. 
to, to see to, th that the inner me sees the inner you, <laughs> so to speak. So, so to talk about the existential f factor of, of this kind of work, I think that is very, very important also in a, in a policy level, not only in an in a existential level. Um, we are so fortunate that both these amazing people have <laughs> agreed to contribute also to share actually what uh, poetry can, what it can do. Uh, so we thought we can't just talk about poetry, we need to, to also share some, some poetry. So would it be okay for you Malebo to, to start with something to read? Yes, please, it's okay for me to start yeah. because I'm sitting to a, next to a giant <laughs> and I'm a baby poet because my background is tech and you know, non-fiction, so I'm really new into this. Um, I was really just talking about, for a very long time, my relationship with Cape Town was complex, right? And because of the history with Cape Town and the demographics in Cape Town, we always say as, as South Africans, when you're in Cape Town, you feel like you're in Europe. You feel like the other, right? And I've always hated Cape Town because of that until the land says, but I don't hate you. Like, we have a relationship. And, and for me, the, 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 the poem that I wrote, like, deals with that complexity. And I'm going to read it in like a rhyming kind of poetic sense because I've always wanted to be a spoken poet, so please indulge me. <laughs> Native nostalgia, a prelude to the now. When will we ever feel safe in the mother city's nest? Ning, ni, ni. I long for a time when harmony between humans and nature was not a utopian dream scattered by the patter of raindrops that threaten rooftops. The rain that is no longer euphony or lullaby to hush you to slumber. A storm is fast approaching. Stay on higher ground. Dig up trenches and unclog the drains. Wailing vo voices choking within the mother city echo. Code red, declare this a national emergency. Belligerent tempests warn of a time to come. A treaty between the mortals and the natural environment is needed. Displaced? Confused, we've become strangers to the mother. Are you going to listen to the wind or are you going to wait for floating lilies to deliver seeds of condolences? Thank you. Thank you so much. I always get so emotional, I don't know, I think it's the imagery and it touches so deep every time someone uh, is sharing so, uh, so uh, sincerely. Thank you so much. Uh, and I hope <laughs> you also um, agreed to share some poetry for, for the amazing audience that we have here. We will, after this we will go into a book launch and we will talk about the solidarity movement and the struggles and and the ancestors' shoulders that we are all standing on in different capacities. But um, could you also please share some of your poetry for the amazing audience that we have here today? Of course. Um, so I'm going to read two, two poems uh, that sort of lap into each other. I watched my mother learn a new language in her old age. Her tongue did not startle in her mouth. I didn't know you could teach someone a language you were not fluent in. It was my father who taught my mother. He taught her syllables with his hands, taught her metaphors with his absence. He embedded jargons on her wrists, put an accent on her throat, loved it when she spoke, couldn't understand when she spoke, Loved the sound of it anyway. My mother sounds like whipping when she speaks. The earth vibrates when tears fall from her face. Anger erupts in me when she is sad. I want to become lightning when she mourns. I want to strike my father on his chest. Forbid him not to speak, although I have many questions. My tongue cannot move when I am raging anger towards him. 
See, he taught me a language too, one he is fluent in. His tongue cannot move when there is blood on the door handle, so he counts on his feet to walk away. My father is leaving, but he never takes his suitcase with him, doesn't know how to be completely gone, doesn't know how to stay. He hates the sight of blood. Our face is tall from all he's walking away, so he cannot stand looking at us. I don't know what language or languages he was taught in when growing up, but I think he mastered them all. I have always associated suitcases with leaving, bags readily packed for exit, a somber face with indifferent eyes. Once, my mother packed a suitcase for my father when he hadn't been home for weeks. A heavy heart submerged beneath the crucifix of hope. My father never did learn how to pack his own bags. Later, it was his kidneys that did the packing for him. When he died, I watched my mother's will for life exit in her eyes. I knew in that moment that she had loved a hurricane for most of her life, that sometimes women deny themselves freedom, that there is a kind of love that drives you empty, that sometimes women lose themselves trying to help an unwilling man find himself, that other times people are too far gone for anything less than deity to salvage, but before his tit but before his kidneys took pity on us, my father unpacked the suitcase he found waiting for him, became more articulate in stacking wounds against the walls of our home. I saw my father nest the backbone of his unmerciful tongue. I saw him drink himself into a bottle. I saw him try to find himself in every bottle. My father lost his will in the bottle my father's will became the bottle. My father drowned in the bottle, but it was the rest of us who grasped for air. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, did you have another one, or, or was this the one? You have another one, okay. That, that was the one, okay. Well, we are finished here at the, at, for this uh, part of the, of the session, and that's good because I'm uh, all in tears. So, thank you so much for contributing, for sharing, for showing us the vulnerability of, of, of ourselves and our possibilities of changing the world through art and poetry. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Louise, Malevo, and Hope. Och men gå ingenstans för snart kommer det hända mycket spännande grejer här. Både ni som sitter framför datorn.